Oh dear. Yeah. That's horrendous. What, for a laugh, for a cheap shot, to impress your mates, I, I don't know, but it sickens me. This week on Bondi Vet. Unfortunately, it does mean we're gonna have to amputate the Lorio's leg. Uh. Oh. In Richmond, <laughs> a lively patient has arrived at the practice. Sounds ferocious, Abigail, she does, doesn't, doesn't she? <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. Don't be fooled. <laughs> Good morning. Abby has brought in Bella because the 15-week-old golden cocker spaniel pup has an injured tail. <laughs> Come on, you. Come on, you. Yes, you get that toy. Let's go. Into the consult room. Come on, you. Hey. Come on. She's a bit of a handful. She is. She, she is. is. She looks like butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. But, yes. Uh, she's got a, a lot of attitude, a lot okay. of character. Yes. So tell me why you're in today. So we've just started going on walks since she's had all her jabs. Yeah. And, you know, she's very rambunctious, running around, playing. And then when we were coming back, I tripped over her. Ooh. And it was only watching her walk around later that I noticed her tail was drooping. Right. Whereas normally it's up and wagging. Okay. It's sort of hanging and the second half just sort of drops off. So normally you kind of get that sort of happy, happy windscreen wiper. Yes, yes. And at the moment it's sort of like a sad it's flower, like, isn't it? Yes, that needs a good water. It does. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if it was something that could be fixed yeah. now, I didn't want to wait and see what happened. Yeah. And if then in a week's time they said, oh, well, you know, maybe if we'd seen it sooner, we could have done yeah. something. Yeah. I completely understand. Yeah. I really do. And I always think it's why babies and puppies are covered in a little bit of extra squinch yeah. for those kind <laughs> of accidents yeah. when they happen. It's the insurance policy of nature to yeah. get them through yeah. being babies. Yeah. Abby is a classic new mum. She's incredibly anxious and she also feels incredibly guilty. <laughs> She's very, very worried, and I'm hoping today I'll be able to appease her concerns. Let's see your tail, baby girl. Let's see. Oh, dear. Yes. It's sad, isn't it? Very sad-looking tail. It's a very good description of it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's pop you back up. Come here, baby. Come here, Bella, come. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. All right, so if I get just to hold around the shoulders there, that's it. So a little bit of a cuddle, and I'm just going to have a little feel. Bella, good girl. Back. Hello. I know. Come on. Okay, so getting sort of sore and sore as we move towards Come on, the tip. It's all right, Bella. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, it's all right. nice little bit, sweetie. It's all right, Bella. Nice little bit. It's quite important all this stuff. Oh my gosh. So, as much as that might be distressing, pain is actually a good thing, okay? Because it shows that she can feel it. All right. If she couldn't feel that and she was being happy as Larry, then we should be gravely concerned that she can feel it. All right. I'm sorry to upset you. It's okay. Yeah, these things do happen. Puppies, yeah, they're trouble. Yeah, in Don't a good worry. Way. Don't in worry. God oh, okay. bless you. Right. So, what we need to do is to perform an x ray, obviously, yeah. to be able to assess the spine as it goes into the tail and just see is there anything that we need to correct. Yeah. If there isn't anything on the x-ray and it's a neurological issue, then sometimes it can just be that there's a halt in transmission of the senses. It's kind of like if you've got a garden hose and you put your foot on it, the water won't be able to transmit from one end to the other. And once that swelling has gone away, that inflammation reduces, the foot comes off the hose, and now there's transmission of nerve impulses back up to the brain and Bella wags the tail again. So if that was never to improve, then worst case scenario would be amputation. Yeah, that's the thing that kills me. Yeah. I'm really hoping that it will fix itself or some intervention will write it. It'd just be so sad if she lost it. Well, let's hope she can keep it. I, yeah, I hope so. Really hope so. It's an agonising wait, but equally I feel we're doing everything that we can. Well, if you say goodbye to a little girl. All right, Bella, see you in a minute. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good girl. Good girl, Bella. Good girl. See you later, Abby. See you later. 
I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, I just want her to be better and not in pain. Thank you. Thank you. That's my nose. X-ray. That's all looking fine. Thankfully, I can't see any breaks, I can't see any dislocation, so given some time and some anti-inflammatories, I'm hopeful that Bella's little tail will start wagging again. A firm bandage will help support Bella's tail as it heals. There we go. One leopard print bandage tail. <laughs> Quite the fashion statement now. Yeah, I hope it helps to do the job and this little girl's wagging very soon. But let's wake her up, shall we? Upstairs, Bella's owner, Abby, is waiting for news on the fate of her little girl's tail. Just pacing up and down. Um, yeah, just worrying. Hi. Hi. Here's your girl. Bella. So she's a bit sleepy at the moment, which is why she's not as enthusiastic as she normally is. There isn't anything to suggest either a dislocation or a fracture in the tail will be wagging, hopefully, quite soon. Wagging hoping, properly? Wagging properly. Oh. I'm hopeful, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's OK. Bella. Bella. I think she's going to be just fine. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Bye, gorgeous. Come on, Bella. See you later. See you later. Can't wait to, for it to be right to rain. Bella, heel. Bella, come. Bella, come. It's good seeing you, but I wasn't expecting to see you here so soon. Are you? A few days later, Bella has unexpectedly been brought back to the clinic to see Scott after re-injuring her droopy tail. Hey, Nay. Hi, Scott. Hi, Bella. What are you doing back? Hey, what are you doing back? Unfortunately, she was playing rough with another dog in the park, which probably wasn't the best idea when you got an injured tail. Yeah. I, I just put something temporary on for the minute. Yeah. But... Yeah, hopefully it's not too bad. Hey, hopefully it's not too bad. Oh dear. Yeah. That's horrendous. Two major tail injuries in less than a week. She has an awful injury. She has what's called a degloving injury. So basically the end of the covering of the tail has literally come off. So it's basically like if she had a finger and you just took the tissue off the finger, you're left with the bones. And that's exactly what that is. So what are you thinking? Well, the battle is lost. We're going to have to amputate a tail. Oh, so annoying. I just so wanted that dog to have a tail. But now it's become infected. That skin has died away. All right, well, let's give you some anaesthetic, my sweet, and let's see how much tail we can salvage. So I've made a skin incision just slightly further down the tail than where I'm going to amputate the bones themselves from the column. I've done that just so that I've got something to wrap over the end of the tail. And then I just have to cut through that space between the two vertebrae, cut through the cord, and then close it up. So not too difficult, just a bit sad. So that's the degloved part of the tail. And then this bit is that floppy bit. So hopefully that's the last bit of tail I need to remove from little Bella. Now I just need to make it look nice. It's a shorter tail, but it's a healthy tail. And I know that she'll go on to make a full recovery. And yes, she'll still be able to wag. That's that. All right, put a little dressing on first and then we'll wake this little girl up, shall we? Poor Abby is just beside herself with concern. 
but now I'm very happy that I am giving her the peace of mind in knowing that Bella will be just fine, even though she's got a shorter tail. Don't have to change your name. You're still Bella the Beautiful, aren't you? Once the hair grows back, no one will notice. No, no, they won't. Mum? Hmm? Come on, that's a good girl. Good girl. I think I've worn a hole in my floor, <laughs> just pacing around the house and not knowing what to do with myself. <sighs> just, yeah, just worrying so much about her. Here she is. There she is. Hello. Oh, Bella. <laughs> Bella, Bella. There's your girl. Oh, Bella. <laughs> so you can have the happy smiley Bella. collared end. <laughs> Bella. Oh, Bella. Bella, Bella, Bella. So no worse for wear, oh. as you can see. Oh, and under Bella. there, you can feel she still has a very waggy tail. It's just a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter. Yeah, oh, but not Bella. too bad. It's still the most beautiful, beautiful Bella. Now the end of Bella's tail is gone. We just have a lovely, healthy, shortened tail. All that guilt can just be put away now. I know that Bella's going to make a full recovery and hopefully Abby can have a good night's sleep. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So a little bit of time that she'll have the cone of shame on. Yep. Just okay. so she leaves it alone yep. and allows it to heal. And then, fingers crossed, we'll see you back out in the parks of Richmond yes. <laughs> with a tail that still wags yeah. and a happy puppy. Oh, thank you. Oh, Bella. Obviously, I was devastated when I saw what had happened. It was hard to get my head around that, but I know that she's not in pain, that she's been looked after, that it'll heal. Yeah, it's just like a wave of relief now. The joy of puppies, oh, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Stress. Oh, I want to kiss her, but I can't get my head in the cone. <laughs> <laughs>《And ten weeks after her partial tail amputation, little Bella is back enjoying plays in the park with her owner, Abby. — Drop. — Good girl. — She's bounced straight back. You wouldn't even know anything had happened. Of course, I'm still traumatised, but she's... <laughs> she's right as rain. — That's it. Come on. Come this way. — And a special friend has arrived for a puppy play date. — Hello, Abby. — Hello. — Hello, Bella. <laughs> How are Hello. you? — I'm fine. How are you? Very good to see you. I'm really good to well. See you too. Um, I just introduced you to Scully. Hello, yeah. Scully. Oh, little Bella. Today, because of the fact that poor little Bella has lost quite a lot of her puppyhood, being injured and then going through the recovery process, I thought that I'd uh, lend a helping hand to her socialisation by bringing along my little fluff ball, Scully. So nice Bella. to see Bella playing. And look at that, a waggy tail. Oh, I know. It hasn't stopped. Bella's tail looks absolutely great. It's wagging very happily. Hello, baby. Mm, I know, I love you too. Yeah. Let me see what you've got. Oh, OK, well, you can chew my ear whilst I have a look at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's healed beautifully yeah. well, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Really yeah. great. And I could see, as I walked up, yeah, her tail yeah, is standing right up, up again. Yeah. So yeah. it's back to attention. It hey? is, yes. Yeah, very good. So things are looking up. Thank goodness. Her tail <laughs> and our mood. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no tears today. No. I was just beside myself. I, I don't think I've cried so much. I couldn't even say the, the word amputate for three weeks. Yeah, it was very traumatic for, yeah. for me more than Bella. Yeah. She's, she's recovered. She's, she's no worse for wear, yeah. is she? I mean, she's... Um, she's right as rain. She, happy, enjoying yeah, the park. Yeah. Hey, do you want to play with your little playmate then? Hey? Yes, I think Aww. you should. Now, Scully, can you be gentle? Because I've only got this much tail to play with. <laughs> <laughs> She's just so loving and sweet, and my life has improved immeasurably with her, and she's still absolutely beautiful, and I wouldn't be without her. Tail or no tail. <laughs> Happy, happy tail. Yeah. When she gets a good bit of momentum, she's got heaps of rotation and throughout the lumbar spine as well. That hip will start to wear properly. I worry about her knee and her ankle though. 
In Sydney, Audrey is catching up with good friend Matt, who wants her advice about his beloved Rottweiler, Sunday. Her only saving grace is that she does so much swimming that she's well yeah. muscled. Alrighty, good girl. A lady messaged us on Instagram and said, I've got a dog that's missing a leg. So she shows up with this beautiful Rottweiler puppy and I looked at it and I just thought, this dog's gonna change my life. You can kind of see she's got less muscle on that left leg with a little nubby. Yeah. Sunday was born with four legs, but on the second day of her life, she needed to have her back left foot cut off, just below her ankle. I don't know the story why. I think a few of the puppies in the litter didn't make it. She was lucky that that's all that happened to her. How is she going? Yeah, she's going pretty good. Starting to show a little bit of lameness and limping, and you can tell she's getting a bit sore on it. Sunday's so important to Matt, and you can see their amazing relationship and bond. Do you want to party again? We're a little bit worried because she's starting to struggle just walking on three legs. Come on, sweetie. In the past, we've managed her with external prosthesis, but that's obviously uncomfortable for her and she's not really liking having that attached to her leg. Today, Sunday is walking without her prosthetic foot, so Audrey can gauge how the three-year-old copes with her disability. You can see that she's sort of curving around in an unusual way and just kind of bending that right leg to compensate. Yeah, she's a beautiful dog and I love her and I just want to see her have a really good quality of life, so love to see what you think and what can be done. So it'd be interesting to kind of see her in the rehab clinic. Come on, hey! After observing Sunday outdoors, Audrey is now keen to get a more scientific analysis of how she walks. Come on, in this room. What I do at the Animal Rehab Clinic, it's the way you should think about it, it's kind of like a physio clinic for animals. So anything that a human might go to a chiro or a physio or a massage therapist for, that's the kind of stuff that we do. Up you get. Good girl. Good girl. Stay. Good girl, son. Stay. You wait. Stay. Matt is a trained chiropractor, but swapped treating humans to co-found one of the world's few rehab facilities exclusively for animals. Good girl. Good girl. Matt has had Sunday since she was only a puppy and seen her grow, and he's been amazing with her rehab. Clever girl. I've done every single thing that is possibly available, and even a little bit experimental, to give her the best chance at having a good quality of life. Audrey is running tests on three-year-old Rottweiler Sunday's damaged leg. Good girl. The clinics found a Matt adopted Sunday after her rear left foot was amputated when she was just two days old. I was lucky that she found me rather than the other way around. So it was just fate or luck or good timing or whatever it might be. But I'm very glad that she's in my life. Good girl. We'll give you treaties afterwards, okay? After a stint on the treadmill without a walking aid... Okay. Alrighty. Up. Alright, up. Sunday now has a prosthetic foot attached so Audrey can analyse any differences in her gait. She's using it, which is good. That right back leg actually looks very good. It's nice and straight and she's really extending that knee. And then she's losing that curve in her back as well. So it looks almost like she's walking normally on her good leg. I'd love to see her in the water bath. Okay, well, we... are you ready for a swim? Next, Audrey will test Sunday to see how well her legs work in water. See, she's actually kicking that back leg as if it was a full leg. Yeah, she does swimming three or four times a week. And that's probably what's just keeping her muscle mass. Look at you, darling. You enjoy your swims? Sunday is a nice young dog. She's really, really healthy with all the exercise she's been getting. What's also encouraging to see is that her spine's actually sitting straight. So that tells me that if she is allowed to use all four legs at the same length, she actually walks normally. How are you feeling about surgical options at this stage for her to try and help her walk a bit more normally? Yeah, it's, it's scary. Something needs to be done. We've tried those external prosthetics. Osseointegration surgery is a new type of surgery. It's been done plenty of times in humans, but not much in animals. So instead of using an external prosthesis, which provides a lot of discomfort, using something internally where we screw it into the bone should hopefully provide a more comfort, get her using that leg properly again. There's no easy road out of this. Yeah. It's we do nothing, then she progressively yes. degenerates with the hip and the knee, or we do something, and hopefully it goes well, and it might not. So yeah. it's, it's scary. Yeah. Surgery like this is really tricky for any owner, especially Matt, because he has such a strong bond with Sunday. I really feel for him, because if this was my child or my dog, it kind of tears at the heartstrings. You don't know what the right decision is. I, I've kind of resolved to the thought that to give her the best chance at a good quality of life for however many years she's with me, um, 
I kind of have to go through with this. Yeah. Three-legged dog Sunday has arrived at SASH for a crucial CT scan that could pave the way for life-changing surgery. You want to sit up on the couch, don't you? Owner Matt has agreed to revolutionary technology where a permanent prosthesis would be inserted into the three-year-old's amputated leg. G'day, Matt. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hello, Sunday. Come on in. But first, orthopaedic surgeon Dan has to decide if Sunday is a suitable candidate for the new and risky procedure. It's interesting watching her walking around in here, isn't it? She really, just really wants to use that limb. It's like she's constantly got this, trying to touch the floor. I'd say she's trying to kickstart a motorbike. CT is going to be our best way of knowing where we can potentially put an implant in. Sunday does still have her ankle joint there. It would seem really nice to be able to keep that. The CT will probably give us the information we need for that. OK, let's get her admitted. All right. Osseointegration is a rarely performed procedure. It's been done in small numbers of veterinary patients around the world, but hasn't yet been mastered. Sunday's a patient who we really think can benefit tremendously from this process. But I can't say to Matt, with my hand on my heart, she has a chance of this doing well. to be quite a lot of good bone stock here in her tibia that we should be able to take advantage of. It looks quite nice and straight here, flared at the bottom to stop the implant from moving and all the things we'd really hope to see here and allow us to move forward with giving Sunday a new foot. Pretty promising. Super. Next time we're going to see each other and see Sunday is when we're going ahead with the surgery. Alright, beautiful. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. See you later. Today's successful scan means the risky surgery can now go ahead. Chacha, good girl. After a massive build up, you're going to be a goodie. Matt and his beloved Sunday are ready for breakthrough surgery that will give the three year old a brand new leg. You don't want to get out to your Pachacha. This is not a negotiation today, I'm sorry. To me, today was an inevitability and I am terrified that something will go badly. But I almost feel bound by fate that there's been so many things fall into place that I sort of think this is meant to be. Come on. COVID restrictions mean an anxious Matt can't be with his adored Rottweiler for the high-risk operation. Give me a kiss. Good girl. After a goodbye kiss, Matt hands Sunday over to orthopaedic surgeon Dan. Sunday, who's that? Hello, sweetheart. You good girl. G'day, Matt. Dan, how you doing? So we've reached the day. Yes. How's she doing? Is she all ready to go? Oh, she's more ready than me. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of anticipation for the big day today, getting the team assembled, all the right people here to really give her the best chance of a good outcome. So plenty of nerves after so much of a build-up. Oh, I'm going to miss you, big girl. Hey, kiss. Oh, That'll do it. All good right. girl. Off you go with Dan. Okay. Make sure you bring her back in one piece. <laughs> Speak soon. Thank you. OK, come on, Sunday. I don't think there's an easy way to put someone you care about so much into a risky situation, but there's no going back now. Once inside, Sunday is sedated and prepped for the historic surgery. Sunday couldn't possibly know what's ahead of her. Hopefully she's delighted with the outcome and uh, everyone else is too. Very good, excellent. If all goes well, Sunday will be one of the few animals in the world to have a metal implant inserted into an amputated leg. You happy if we proceed? Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's get going. Dan leads the team, which includes Dr. Munjid, a world expert in human osseointegration surgery. Gently okay. and delicately. Okay. So we need to bore the canal of the tibia to the size that can fit the implant. There is no room for haste here because the bone that we take out can clog 
and it creates much more friction and that can break the tibia. If we shatter the tibia, then there is no chance for inserting the implant. And if that happens, the whole process will fail and Sunday will be worse off than what we started. I cannot hide that I'm anxious. Working on an animal is very different to the human, where the bone is much bigger, and we know how much torsional force the human being can tolerate. However, none of us have the experience with how much Sunday's bone will tolerate. What I'll do now, I'll check the position of the borer inside the tibia. Munjud and his team have finished drilling into Sunday's leg without fracturing the bone. Table up a bit, yeah, go for it, Alex. An x-ray will show if the hole they've made is the right fit for Sunday's implant. This looks very well. The rema is in a good position. We have some thinning of the bone on one side, but it's in a perfect position. Okay, we reached the final stage. If something dramatic's gonna happen, it's gonna happen right now. And uh, we're all a bit nervous about that. So we need to go gentle and slow in order to insert the implant without fracturing the tibia. This is the critical step. We've got to the point where we've made the hole in the right spot, but now we're trying to fit an implant. We know that there's not a lot of extra bone left in her tibia after we've dug this big hole. It's a time that we're all gonna have a little bit of finger crossing going on. As the surgical team again worries they could shatter Sunday's leg, whew, her devoted owner, Matt, is anxious his beloved Rottweiler will come through the risky procedure. It's a high stakes, high emotion thing for me. I hope she's going to be OK. I'm concerned, but I'm happy that she's in good hands. I think we can call it off now. Excellent. You can see the relief in the... Oh. <laughs> Beautiful, well done. Let's have a look at the X-ray now. Munja, Dan and the team are overjoyed. Sunday's implant has been attached safely to her tibia. You can see that's sitting very snug. Looks good, looks very good. Minutes later, the high risk, high tech surgery is over. Thank Great job. Much. Thank you so much. Great job. Excellent. Thank you very much. We have the implant coming out through the skin at the bottom, really nicely, firmly attached. We're really positive about what we've been able to achieve here. This can open an era of using this kind of technology for animals that have lost limbs. Uh, so it's very exciting. Matt, good day. Hey Dan, how you doing? Oh, it's good news. All the surgery's gone ahead without any concerns. The implants exactly where we wanted on the post-operative x-rays. It all looks really, really positive, mate. Awesome, good to know. It'll take several days before Sunday is out of hospital and then months of rehab to help her get used to her shiny new leg. Not being able to be with her because of all the COVID stuff, it's probably equal parts difficult for both of us. I'd love to be there to make sure she's okay. We'd find a lot of comfort being there for each other. So it's, it's gonna be difficult for both of us, I think. Good girl, Sunday, good girl. Been through a lot, haven't you? You've done very well. Good girl. Nice and slow. Good girl. It's three months since Sunday received her brand new, surgically implanted leg. Look at you go, you're so clever. Sunday's really liking her new prosthetic foot. When she's got it on, she loves it. She walks happily, she runs, she jumps, she plays. She's just very comfortable with it. Audrey can't wait to see how her star patient is going. Hi, Matt. Audrey. How are you? Very good, how are you? Good, how's Look at your leg. Yeah. <gasps> Look at you, you look so happy. It really couldn't have gone any better. <laughs> have a good time. Slap <laughs> me on the face. At reception, a seriously injured eight-month-old kitten has just been rushed in. Okay. Can we see you a bit, yeah, no, I'll get this for you straight away. Okay. Just take a seat there. Thank you. Jeez. Blackie belongs to Michael's elderly parents. Tell me what's happened. Okay, well... 
he's, he disappeared for a day and a half, mate, and all of a sudden he's just uh, rocked up in the back porch and he's been meowing and, you know, he's, he, he was actually dragging himself in. So he dragged himself into the, yeah, into the backyard? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. So no idea of what's happened? No idea, no idea. It doesn't look like there's any blood, so... Yeah. This might hurt a bit, mate. Go on. It doesn't look right, does it? No, the front legs are working okay there. Yeah. It's got strength there, but... Look at that back leg there. Yeah, that's what worries me. So it's just hanging limp there. His back legs are basically in an absolute mess. That right leg is just hanging there with no sensation, no movement whatsoever. But to be honest with you, it's the other leg that I'm looking at most intently because if that leg can't be salvaged, then Blackie has no hope. If he can't straighten out that leg, he can't support weight on that leg. Oh, okay. Mate, this could be a real problem. Thought we'd take a, um, a full body shot first okay, just to yep. really check out exactly what's going on. In the X-ray room at Bondi, Blackie is undergoing crucial tests. There's no feeling at all in that tail. No, there. there's not. Are you seeing in there, right? This is just a bit of a check everything shot. Yep. What's that? Look at my boobs. <laughs> That's my oh, It's hard to avoid them right now. <laughs> what is that? The baby possum. In the middle of the x-rays, another of the clinic's orphans has suddenly appeared. I thought you'd slipped a chicken fillet there for a second. <laughs> chicken fillet. <laughs> oh, it's actually the best way to warm him up for me. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Whatever gets you going, so. <laughs> the possum should survive, but sadly, Blackie's x-rays reveal sickening injuries. One back leg is paralysed, and the other has been badly fractured. In terms of a cat having so many things wrong with it that you teeter in the brink of wondering whether it's actually worth keeping on going, Blackie's that cat. Hey, they're incredible. What he's been through and the injuries he has are just amazing. At the Bondi Clinic, Michael is confronted with Blackie's x-rays. His right leg should be sitting like this one here. Why is it so far back? See how there it's been pushed right through? So he's fractured his right femur, his right leg, basically where it inserts into the hip joint. And it's been rammed right through. That's yeah. He's never gonna walk again with a leg like that. I know it's hard to take, but we're looking at that, we're gonna have to amputate that leg. It just puts into perspective what he's done to actually get home though. Dragging two broken legs. He's a fighter, mate, that's for sure. Telling anyone that their much-loved pet is going to lose a leg, it, it's one of the toughest jobs a vet has. You don't want to be in that situation, trust me. Blackie's chances of survival now depend on complex reconstructive surgery to fix his fractured left back leg. There are no guarantees. Put some pins in there to stabilise that fracture. Right. If we don't do that, I'm, I'm sorry to say, it's just, there's nothing we can do. I'll level with you. I, to me, that looks like he's been kicked from behind. Just knowing that somebody out there could have inflicted this horrific injuries to Blackie is just horrible, isn't it? Mm. What, for a laugh, for a cheap shot, to impress your mates? I, I don't know, but it sickens me. Do your tricks, mate, and get him through, get him over the line. Sure, we will, mate. I just hope he's going to be OK. I'll be praying for him. Still yeah, yeah it is. Hey, be better off without it, mate. Eight-month-old Blackie is about to undergo a marathon double operation. The kitten's life depends on it. It's just amazing, isn't it? He's so agreeable to anything you do to him. Yeah, he hasn't stopped purring the whole way through. Chris and Dr Tony Mossman will both be operating on Blackie. Tony is the clinic's orthopaedic expert. All right. The moment of truth for Blackie. So I'm gonna take off the right leg with amputation first of all, and Tony steps in and reconstructs that left leg. So let's go for it. I guess that an amputation sounds simple enough. It's just a matter of getting the leg off, but you do have to be careful obviously for the fact that there is a very big artery, a very big vein, and also a nerve in there. You've got to find those, just delicately remove them, tie them off, and then get on with business. Back up to 99. Okay. There we go. 
Yeah, Bucky, that's it. End of an era. Job is now half done. We've got managed to get that leg off. We now move on to the other side and complete the job. Separate this fracture. So what we're going to do here is put a stainless steel wire to stop it rotating, and then we put a small pin up the centre which holds it in position. Blackie's major operation is continuing. Chris has already amputated the kitten's right leg. Now it's up to Tony to piece back together his other fractured leg. OK, now I just put that back into position. <laughs> you just use the same tools at home, wouldn't you, Tony, to fix a broken chair or two? Absolutely. Chris, Tony did my cupboards as well. <laughs> really? Yes, he did. Multi-talented. Good job. Very good job, yeah. yeah. They're still standing? Okay. Still standing. Straight? Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Looking fallen. good for you, buddy. <laughs> hasn't fallen over. Now, no. all we need now is the mallet. Mm -hmm. This pin now will drive up so that it's level with his joint surface and that'll stay there permanently. Now test his leg. Cats like Blackie can cope with only three legs, but having already lost one, it makes this reconstructive surgery even more critical. It's obviously repairing legs always important, but in Blackie's case, this just has to be 100% straight and support all that weight because if it doesn't work, Blackie can't walk and that'd be, that'd be no future for Blackie. This is outrageous. What have we got here? Hey, Michael, how are you going? Hello, how are you? I'm Chris. It's the morning after Blackie's amputation it's and the kitten's owner, Andrea, has just arrived bearing gifts. Yeah. Thank you. Come on. Come on, Blackie, Madame. That's really good weather. Yeah, she's well, a bit shocked with what she sees. But no. You're not shocked? I'm OK, no. Yeah. No. No. Because my husband lost their finger, I go to the hospital. You OK, Mrs. Angeli? I'm all right to them. Nothing else. She's just saying that it's just a shame what's happened to him. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to go through this, that's what she's saying. But I can tell that he's happy to see you. I can feel that he's purring and, and when he stretches his feet out like that, mm. it's a sign of comfort. Uh, yeah, I'm OK. Yeah. Yes, it's nice. The next step for Blackie is intensive physiotherapy. There's still a little bit of swelling around the, the wound yeah. there, which we'd expect. Yeah. But he's not progressing as quickly as Chris would like. <laughs> We always give in. <laughs> she gives in. You give in. The kitten will need tough love if he's ever going to get through the pain barrier and walk again. Good boy. Come on then. Blackie, you ready? You're going to show off? Show them what you can do. Come, Blackie. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Hey. You're going to run off and hide. <laughs> I think so. After two weeks of rehabilitation, Blackie, the now three-legged cat, is ready to go home. Blackie's just made a truly incredible recovery and I'm almost in awe of the little guy. Over the moon, man, this is awesome. This is great. In the little roll there. Yeah. He's just getting used to, to his new body and the way it works now. Yeah, look at that. It's <laughs> awesome. See you, Black. See you, mate, you stay out of trouble, all right? I'm just totally thrilled, I can't believe it. When I saw him the other day, he was just like down and out, and, but seeing him today and the way he's been moving around and that, no, I'm just totally shocked more than anything. But it's a great result. Blackie is now back to the good life, at home with grateful owners, Andrea and Antonius. She's just happy, you know, big way. Yeah, very happy. Yeah, it's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Love me everything. Yeah, Thank you. No, no, Thank you very much. A pint-sized patient has arrived at Scott's Isleworth practice. Guinea pig Oreo, along with his owner Joanna and her dad Jeremy. He fell off my knee, but I was only kneeling down and we think he's damaged his leg. We're feeling a bit apprehensive, aren't we? But uh, we want to find out what's going on. Good morning, Joanna. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Good morning. Good, thank you. Hi, Oreo. Hello. Such a beautiful boy, aren't you? I think he's the prettiest guinea pig in all of Isleworth. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And he's got a little brother at home as well, isn't he? Yeah. 
Captain Scott. Captain Scott. That's a pretty cool name. Yeah, you can't really beat that, can you? Come on down to the Lorio. Let's go and have a little chat about you, shall we? Come on in the concert room. That's it. Joanna's normally a very chatty child, but she seems very quiet, very subdued. She's worried about her guinea pig. So did he make any noise when he slipped off your lap? Yeah, kind of like a really high-pitched squeak. OK. Oh, that doesn't sound very good, does it? OK, well, let's have a little look, shall we? So I'm just going to have a little feel of his back area there. Good boy. So far, so good. Not making any noise there. Hey, lad. Hey, good boy. Oh, wow. He's really um, passing quite a lot of poo, isn't he? <laughs> Does he do this a lot of time as well? Not this shape. Wow. <laughs> He's really going for it, isn't he? It's like raining guinea pig poo at the moment. Well, better out than in. Hey. Dear. So, a guinea pig's leg shouldn't be able to do that. The fact that it can come out on the side like that. So I think there's something quite seriously wrong with that leg there, unfortunately. It happens all the time. So no one should feel bad. They're not like a cat that can spin around and fall beautifully on their legs. They uh, just take the full impact on their legs. And unfortunately, I think that something has gone quite badly wrong in that leg, which is why he's cried out in pain. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take him downstairs and we're going to perform an x-ray. Okay. Okay. And that'll just allow us to understand exactly what's going on with that back leg. Great. All right. All right. Well, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, boy. You're going to say bye to mummy. Yeah. <laughs> Back at the Isleworth practice. Hey, Gina. Scott and Little Vet Nurse Gina here. are about to x-ray guinea pig Oreo's broken Such leg. A what happened to you? Problem that happens up and down the UK on a regular basis that these little animals get hugged within an inch of their life by their usually young owners. And sadly, this guy uh, decided to leap off little Joanna's lap and has definitely injured this back leg. So you can see that's far from normal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. We can fix it, can't we? Can't you? <laughs> I think so. I think we can give it a good go, definitely. All right, let's go through to X-ray. All right, so let's put our little man on the table. An old glove box is okay. used to hold the little pet oh. still enough oh. for the x-ray. Good boy. He looks quite comfy then. Yeah. X-ray. Uh. Oh. Oh. Ouch. It is very significantly broken leg. That looks like it would have hurt a lot, but he has fractured his femur. It's a break right through the middle of the thigh bone there. Mm. So we're going to need to perform surgery on this boy and try and fix his broken leg. You've been incredibly brave, haven't you? Hey, poor lad. Looking at this x-ray, it's very clear that Oreo has likely been in quite a significant amount of pain. And breaks right there. Oreo is safely under anaesthetic. He seems to be responding well. I can hear his lovely heartbeat in the background, which is making me feel happy. So now it's just about getting on with the job at hand. Scott is going to need another set of hands during the delicate surgery. So vet Phoebe is called in to assist. Hi, guys. Hey, Phoebes. Is this our little guinea pig? Yes, a little broken guinea pig. So I'm just trying to find the ends of the bone at the moment. Wow, that's not just a minor break, is it? No, it's pretty significant, isn't it? <laughs> so the problem is, is that with the fracture occurring, the muscles have contracted. So you've got real tightening, so you've got an overlap of these bones. So what I need to do is just gently encourage them to stretch again. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. Okay, so can you see, there's the other piece of bone there, okay. So what I need you to do is to hold that in place like that. So now it's the case of what we need to do. So just with that hand, let's just try and stretch the leg just to get those two pieces back into alignment. Looks like you're getting somewhere. It is quite tricky to try and complete a surgery like this on Oreo because his bones are really tiny and you can't see the intricate details quite as well as a large animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually a crack. Oh no, that's not good. There's a crack going right up 
Not really far up into the femur. I don't know. Scott has now discovered a nasty crack in the bone, and that means it's far too fragile to be pinned. Sometimes you can see cracks on x-rays and sometimes you can't. And in this case, it's a very small animal, so this line is going to be just microscopic. So there's a fragment of bone there. Wow. And that is full on shattered, unfortunately. Now that's out, there's actually a crack going right up to the knee joint. It's just not going to come together. is full on shattered, unfortunately. There's actually a crack going right up to the knee joint. It's just not gonna come together. At his Iselworth practice, Scott has discovered the break in guinea pig Oreo's leg is far worse than first thought. I'll just try and put a wire around it first and just see if I can give it some stability, but I'm not holding out much hope for this. If the nasty break can't be fixed, then the only option is amputation. That bit of tissue, I need to get out of the way, so can you just try and just here? Mm. Yeah, it's just collapsed now, it's just, mm. it's just not gonna work. I mean, that's just flapping in the breeze there. There's a huge amount of instability in that part of the thigh bone. And unfortunately, I'm just not going to be able to pin it back together because it's just splaying apart like someone's got an ax and cut it in two long ways. Unfortunately, it does mean we're gonna to have to amputate the Lorio's leg. Which is very gutting, isn't it? Most animals do pretty well on three legs. Oreo doesn't have to escape from predators, so he can just sit in a little girl's bedroom and be loved. Oreo's owner, Joanna, and her dad, Jeremy, have been waiting by the phone for any news. It's not such great news, I'm afraid. Oreo's leg is fractured, and the fracture has actually got a crack in it which is going all the way down to the knee. So unfortunately, what we're gonna have to do is to amputate his leg. Well, um, that is, I guess, the best solution. You know, I think that it's it's certainly something that we should you know, give him the chance. Yeah, okay, and that's it's just one of those things. Okay, Jeremy, well look, I'm gonna crack on and finish this procedure and then we'll wake your boy up. I'm sorry I've had to deliver that news to you. All the best. Okay, cheers, bye-bye. It's tough to call an owner mid-surgery, but in this case, unfortunately, this is the only way to go. Obviously, I'm very disappointed to be Oreo's vet and not be able to get the perfect result, which is to send him home with all four legs intact. But guinea pigs are very resilient little creatures and performing the amputation doesn't mean the end of his life. It literally means the start of a new one. He will have three legs, but he will be out of pain. Let's wake this boy up, shall we? He's off already. Good boy. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Oreo will sleep off the anaesthetic before heading home later today. Here you go. Mummy will be back to pick you up very soon. Yes, she will. Yeah. In Iselworth, owner Joanna and her dad Jeremy are back to pick up guinea pig Oreo. Hi, hey, guys. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hello, Joanna. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Daddy's told you what's happened today, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? Glad he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you're being very brave. So I just want to warn you, okay? Obviously, he's lost his leg. All right. What you got to remember is that animals aren't hypochondriacs, so he's not going to complain to you that he doesn't have a leg. He just wants lots of love and cuddles. All right. So I just here he is here. Where's mummy? There he is. Wow. So let me show him to you. There you go. What are those metal bits? So they're called staples, and they're going to hold the skin together. And there's lots of stitches underneath to keep it all together. And in the meantime, he needs lots of love, and he will be able to move around. He just needs to get used to walking on three legs rather than on four. Yeah, I'm really excited to get him home and just cuddle him. The staples come out in about 10 days. See, look, you can wow. see moving around there already. See, you're having a little run around. That's good. Oreo seems to be making a great recovery. He's already moving around the table, so he definitely seems to be back to his old tricks. All right then, Johnny, you give him a lovely cuddle. 
All right. There you go. All right, you look after your boy for me, and I'll see you very soon. All right. What'd you say, Joanna? Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank see you, Larry. Thank you, Scott. All the best. All the best. No yeah. worries. Bye, Bye, guys. I think Joanna's been very brave and said, uh, well, you know, if he hasn't got it, then he can't feel the pain. And, I, you know, and that makes sense. So, yeah, we're very pleased with the outcome. Let's go. You okay? If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.